Welcome back to Nerd Wars, and you guessed it, I have to do another Acolyte video. I thought we were done. I thought the pain was over, but no. And I'm sorry to do this to you guys, but... So you ain't gonna Disney Plus me. The Acolyte was inspired by Cowboy Bebop. This is not even the story for today. I just had to... I, I couldn't not yell about this. Do it. So what was the Acolyte inspired by? Oh, just Shinichiro Watanabe. He's the creator of Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo, and I would argue more importantly, and most importantly, is Ace Dandy. If you haven't seen it, oh my god, it's on Hulu. It, I, Cowboy Bebop was my favorite anime for so long, and then Ace Dandy. Yes, yes. Those were big references, not visually, but tonally. Oh, this was actually really deep. That guy was super deep, guys. It's so bad as it is, and then you see the interviews, and Leslie Handlin actually fully explains things more. It's... It gets so much worse. You know the horrendous pacing of the show? Well, Cowboy Bebop bounces back and forth between Spike's backstory, which is incredibly tragic and heart-wrenching. No, it really doesn't. If you've actually seen Cowboy Bebop, she has a tattoo of Faye on her arm, which that worried me when I first saw that. Pretty sure the Acolyte was inspired by Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. Hey, guys. And then Spike's fun buoyancy, when they do the episodic episodes, fun buoyancy, I, th there was zero fun. Lots of yelling. I yelled several gamer words that last episode. And Spike's a Han Solo coded character. <laughs> so totally those were references. Oh my God, I hate <laughs> I wasn't a Star Wars fan growing up, so I can't understand the pain that you guys are feeling, but hearing my boy Cowboy Bebop and Spike being brought in, <laughs> I understand. And I just wanted to address a couple of things that sort of keep coming up in the comments amongst fans. Gekin Yord, that was very Shinichiro Watanabe, like that sort of buoyant fun, buoyant fun? Like when he had his shirt off or something? And then meeting a tragic end. Yeah, I remember like how you set up their characters and some like story and then you just killed them and there's no story arc or anything. I mean, honestly, the best part, I wish, I wish all the Jedi would have died, but okay, we're moving on to the actual story. Wait, this isn't the actual story. Leslie Headland lightsabers represent male genitalia and the moist cave in The Last Jedi represents female genitalia. Consider yourself such a No, no, we gotta get to the real one. We only have so much time. First, I wanted to apologize to the fans. Showrunner Leslie Headland claims Osha killed Soul in the Acolyte because he was imposing benign sexism on her. Oh my god. I thought the brain rot was over. You're too old for this shit. So it turns out when Osha kills Soul and becomes is the evil person she was from the very beginning, Apparently, that was actually a good thing, and she's the hero now, and Soul's the bad guy. <laughs> Leslie, you're evil. Find Jesus. Yeah, I just try to treat everything as if we're on RuPaul's Drag Race. The interviewer says, what's so interesting about that moment where Osha kills Soul and you realize she has been evil from the beginning is how much is conveyed even while he's choking on his words. No, his acting, uh, everyone keeps saying his acting was good. I did not see it. I couldn't understand a word he said in the last episode. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Osha, literally, Mandela is incapable of conveying anything on her face. His, it, they, them's face. My first thought was, he doesn't even give her the agency to make this choice herself because he's accepting his fate. He doesn't get to straight murder him because for some insane reason... A second Jedi just lets himself like Minecraft. It just adds so much more insult to injury. The injury of trying to save her from a coven of evil witches that created her out of thin air in a moist cave. You can't even let her get a satisfactory kill because you're like, it's okay. It's so good. A satisfactory kill? An evil murder, I believe is what you're looking for? This is Collider. Person at Collider. Headland responded, We also knew that it was always going to be the betrayal of the father, and I knew we had to juxtapose Luke's forgiveness and Vader's redemption. We're like, this is a story about the Sith without any actual Sith in it. So that's not gonna happen. You six foot, double D-sized breast, two inch waist. And you're absolutely right. There's this thing that's called benign sexism, and part of it is this paternal protectionism. It seems like this good thing, but like you said, there's this I have to protect you from everything. I have to make sure you're okay. I have to tell you what track to get on. And then once you're on that track, I need to support you. Uh, being a parent, ultimately what happens is, again, this is a father-daughter relationship. As women evolve in their lives and develop their own personalities separate from their fathers, the one that the media creates in their heads, at some point they have to reject that protectionism when they go off to college and then make like some of the worst decisions of their lives. Almost like they need that paternal protectionism. Again, I'm so proud of it. Why? There's something wrong with you, Leslie. I have so many favorite moments in the show. I have like a hundred. Are you <laughs> Manny Jacinto? You get the reveal of, of Quimir, 
of the stranger apparently. I, I like that moment. I think I can maybe say one moment I liked. And if they would have killed Basil, could have gotten two. One of my favorite moments is when he says, I did everything because I love, he's going to say I love you. And not only is that a level of attachment that an unbalanced Jedi would have, yes, it's almost like bad writing. It proved to be too complicated. He very clearly is losing in the last half of the season, but that's also the justification for that kind of behavior between the father and the daughter. He's being too protectionist, trying to save an innocent little girl. Well, I wouldn't say innocent little girl from a coven of evil space witches that wanted to literally brand her forehead. He has to at some point say, I reject what you have told me I need to do to make you proud to follow in your footsteps. She has to do that. What? She... You gotta follow in his footsteps by becoming a Sith acolyte? <laughs> yeah, genius. I do think when he says, it's okay, I think you're right. He's imposing on her agency at that point. Imposing on her murder agency. But I do think in a weird way, she needed it. She needed his acceptance. She didn't need to drink the, the green vial. Not his approval, but his acceptance of his fate. I think is what gives her that energy to do the final fist clinch. And murders her father. For someone she just met like a day ago who's been kidnapped her. Leslie, you need to find Jesus and possibly a good psych or a different psychiatrist. I know you have one. And she literally just goes on about how she is evil and how she is a villain. Oh, who would have thought the one feeding women to Harvey Weinstein relates to villains? How strange. Villains are a great proxy for getting all of her evil feelings out. Like I said, they got sort of slurped up in my various crevices, never to be retrieved again. She rarely puts herself into the protagonist because the protagonist has to be the protagonist. Yeah, we didn't have a protagonist in the Acolyte. We had Osha. And then she says that, yeah, she's basically Osha and May. Awesome. I can't <laughs> believe how it failed. However, could it? And talks about how she basically... Went back to like her high school days. Started writing her fan fiction like in high school. She loves the characters and no one wants to ship them more than her. She loves them so much. She loves the stranger. Great. I don't believe what I'm hearing. And the stranger, the bad guy, is the one that represents her. Oh my god. Leslie, find Jesus. I wish Cormier would have pulled a She-Hulk and broken out of the screen and gone on the Disney Plus uh, main page and then gone into the writer's room. And Leslie could have dealt with some of her feelings with him. And you can make sure we didn't get a season two. Are we going to get a season two? Like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if we're going to and if we should and if society can survive another season of The Acolyte. I know I can't. Please send help. Thanks for watching and please follow the algorithm on your way out and support the channel by becoming a YouTube member.